What's up guys, I'm Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, and fitness enthusiast. I help clients with bloating, gas, and other digestive issues so they can look and feel their best. So I'm officially on the bandwagon now. I'm talking about, I've tried chat GPT. This artificial intelligence program has really burst onto the scene in the past few months and everyone seems to be talking about it. So figured I would give it a try. If you don't know what chat GPT is already, it's a computer program that basically can understand and use human language, just like you and I do. The GPT in the name stands for Generative Pre-Trained Transformer. I'm reading this, obviously. Basically, this means that ChatGPT has been trained on a massive amount of text and internet from the internet and books, so it knows a lot about a variety of topics. When you ask it a question or say something to it, it basically uses what it has learned by scouring over all the internet and responding appropriately. So that was the definition of it. I actually asked ChatGPT if it could explain ChatGPT to a 12 year old and that was the answer it gave. You could truly ask it anything. Here's a clip of me procrastinating and asking it random things before I actually started to make this video just to give you an idea of what it looks like and what the responses look like as well. On the initial surface level, it seems really cool and can be used for anything, but when it comes to medical advice, I was really curious to see how good the answers that it provides actually are. This tool obviously takes information that it finds on the internet, and as you know, some information on the internet is great and others is not as reputable or reliable. I wanted to jump on here and ask ChatGPT a few basic and even a little bit more complicated questions just to see what the answers would be like. I put a few actual questions in here and I hit submit and to be honest, I haven't actually read the responses yet, so I'm really curious to see what is gonna come up and I'm gonna do this live right here. And for each response to the questions that ChatGPT gives, I'll just kind of give my own assessment and analysis of their answer as well. First question I have on here is, what are the best supplements for gut health? And it looks like it says, there are several supplements that can be beneficial for gut health. Here are some of the most commonly recommended ones. It says number one, probiotics. They're live bacteria that can promote a healthy balance of gut bacteria. They can be found in foods such as yogurt and kefir or taken in supplement form. Number two, it has prebiotics, are a type of fiber that feed the good bacteria in your gut. They can be found in foods such as bananas, onions, garlic, and artichokes, or taken in supplement form. Number three, it has digestive enzymes. Digestive enzymes can help break down food and improve nutrient absorption. They can be taken in supplement form. Number four, glutamine. Glutamine is an amino acid that can help repair the gut lining and reduce inflammation. It can be taken in supplement form. Omega-3 fatty acids is number five. They're anti-inflammatory and can help reduce inflammation in the gut. They can be found in foods such as salmon and other fatty fish or taken in supplement form. Number six, magnesium. Magnesium can help relax the muscles in the digestive tract and improve bowel regularity. It can be taken in supplement form. And then it has a little disclaimer after this. So, I mean, overall, all of these are supplements that are good for gut health. It's not a comprehensive list. It doesn't go into a ton of detail. I'm sure if I pried and kept asking questions to it to further elaborate, it may give a little bit more information, but for a question like this, it gives a good basic answer. And I would say these are, for the majority of people, would be true that they're helpful for gut health. Second question I have are, what are the best probiotics for SIBO? Uh, I got a little bit more technical in here. It's maybe a little bit more difficult to find this answer depending on where you look online and it says small intestinal bacterial overgrowth SIBO is a condition in which there is an overgrowth of bacteria in the small intestines leading to a variety of digestive symptoms. While probiotics can be beneficial for some people with SIBO, not all probiotics are created equal and some may exacerbate symptoms. The best probiotics for SIBO are those that contain strains of bacteria that have been shown to be beneficial for reducing bacterial overgrowth and improving digestive symptoms. These include Lactobacillus plantarum is number one. This strain has been shown to be effective in reducing SIBO symptoms and improving overall digestive health. Two, Bifidobacterium infantis. This strain has been shown to reduce inflammation and improve gut barrier function, which can be beneficial for people with SIBO. And three, it has Saccharomyces boulardii. This beneficial yeast has been shown to reduce symptoms of diarrhea and improve gut health. 
and people with SIBO. And then it has a disclaimer as well on here. And just a final note, it's important to note that not all people with SIBO will benefit from probiotics and that individual responses may vary. Additionally, the specific strains and dosages of probiotics that are affected for SIBO may differ depending on the underlying cause and severity of the condition. Therefore, it is important to consult with a healthcare professional before starting any new supplement regimen for SIBO. So they seem to throw a little disclaimer at the end of each answer. If you bring up some health related issue, just probably for legal liability reasons, which makes sense. Um, yeah, so I mean, the three basic type of probiotics that have been studied to show that they can be beneficial for treatment of SIBO. The first is Lactobacillus and Bifidobacterium species, in general, a, a wide variety of each of them. It can kind of depend on if you have more loose stools or constipation. If you have more loose stools, usually more Lactobacillus seems to be more helpful. Uh, more constipation, some more Bifidobacterium can be helpful. Saccharomyces boulardii was the second type, so they have that one listed on here. The third type that has been tried and looked at studies are the soil-based organisms, which seem to have some efficacy in helping with SIBO treatment. So the third type of probiotic wasn't mentioned on here. So just something of note. And then next question I have is, what is the best SIBO treatment? SIBO or small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, it goes on to define it again, I won't repeat that. It has antibiotics such as rifaximin and neomycin are commonly used to treat SIBO by reducing the bacterial overgrowth. However, they may not be effective in all cases and have side effects. This is definitely true. Definitely don't work for all cases. In one study that's the most prominent one, they seem to have worked, I believe, it was in around 45% of cases in eradicating SIBO. Uh, there's more variables to that, so that's not uh, an all uh, encompassing number of everything. Second, it's probiotics, uh, beneficial bacteria that can help restore the balance of gut microbiota. However, their effectiveness in treating SIBO is still debated. Uh, that is true, it's still debated. There is data and studies that show that they are effective or can be effective in treating SIBO, though. Uh, the third, they have the low FODMAP diet. It's a dietary approach that involves restricting foods that are high in fermentable carbs, which can exacerbate SIBO symptoms. This has shown to be effective in reducing symptoms in some people with SIBO. I would add with the low FODMAP diet, it's not actually a treatment. It does reduce the symptoms, but in terms of the actual answer on this question, I would probably leave this low FODMAP diet portion out. It just can be a little bit confusing or ambiguous in the language. It can definitely help with reducing symptoms and make you feel better as you're doing a SIBO treatment but a treatment in itself, uh, to the best of my knowledge, there's not any evidence to actually show this. Fourth, elemental diet. As elemental diet involves consuming a liquid that contains pre-digested nutrients, this approach can be effective in reducing SIBO symptoms, but may be difficult to adhere to. It may not be suitable for everyone. Um, I would probably edit this that it can not only be effective in reducing SIBO symptoms, but it can actually get rid of SIBO altogether. So I'd probably make that distinguishment and the answer, it is definitely true that it can be difficult to adhere to. It may not be suitable for everyone because uh, it can taste bad. You can't eat regular food with it and it's definitely very expensive to buy in most cases. Decent answer. And then the fifth, that has herbal supplements. Certain herbal supplements such as berberine, oregano oil, and garlic extract have been shown to have antimicrobial properties and may help reduce bacterial overgrowth in the small intestines. This is a very generic answer. Uh, this statement is definitely true though. Uh, it doesn't elaborate much more. As I mentioned before, you could probably type in a few more things and get a little bit more info and more detail. But for the sake of this video, kind of got my answer in terms of seeing what type of responses that you would get. So there you have it. Based on the few questions that I asked about gut health, I'd say that it can provide a, a basic answer probably to get you started. I definitely continue researching, talking to people and seeking help just to get more detailed answers and more targeted structured support. I'm definitely curious to know a little bit more how it kind of evaluates data. Um, off the screen here, I checked to see where it gets the info from in health related sources. Peer reviewed literature and primary literature, which are scientific studies and things like that, tend to be the most reputable sources. Uh, ChatGPT says it does use those, but it can't always know for certain where it's pulling the exact information from. And I'm curious to know when new data comes out in the future, how that new data is gonna be utilized in the algorithm and 
how heavily it weighs against the old data that may have been disproven. So just a thought that I had when going through this. That is all for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did or found it helpful, please like and subscribe to my channel. I post a new full length video every Monday at 6 p.m. Central Time and YouTube Shorts throughout the week. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week.